Welcome to TechSoup Talks. Today's webinar is Manage Your Data, Donations, and More with City CRM. My name is Cami Griffiths, and we'd like to thank ReadyTalk for sponsoring this webinar series. And also thank presenters Dave Greenberg and Jeff Porter for taking time to put together such a great presentation. I'll be giving, we'll be doing introductions in just a few minutes. To get us started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about TechSoup for those of you who are new to what we do. We are working towards a time when every nonprofit and social benefit organization on the planet has the technology resources and knowledge they need to operate at their full potential. Here's a screen grab of our homepage. Again, for those of you who are new to TechSoup, there's quite a bit going on here. We've got our donation program where we take donations from companies like Microsoft, Adobe, Symantec, and 36 other vendors and redistribute it to nonprofits and libraries for a low administrative cost. So you'll get Microsoft Office for $20 or $30 as opposed to $400. So if you want to check out more information about that, you can go to Get Products. There's also articles and other learning um, programs on the Learning Center, which is also where you can find the webinars. And there's more information on our community forums that I had mentioned. So if you have questions, you post those to the community forums. And we have a special project just for libraries as well. So there's a little bit about what we do. We've got some newsletters you can sign up for. So now I'd like to introduce our presenters. I'm so happy to have um, their knowledge. This is a webinar I've been wanting to do for quite a while. City CRM um, is really great, uh, yet complicated. So I wanted for us to go through what Civi has to offer, and then give you a case study about someone who is using it. So Dave, let's get started. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Cami. Uh, first of all, thanks, Cami, for uh, pulling this together. Um, the folks on the City Firm Project and in the community are really excited uh, to have this opportunity to share uh, this kind of outreach and, and bringing potentially more people into the community um, through the TechSoup channel. Um, um, my name is Dave Greenberg, and I've been working on the CVSRM project uh, for five or six years, pretty much since the beginning. Um, okay, I'm trying to speak up. Um, I have a background in social work and community mental health, and uh, I have been um, working in IT for about 20 something years, and uh, very excited to uh, partner with. Donald Lobo and a great team of folks uh, to put together the Civi Serum project, um, which we've been growing and working on for the last five, six years. And I'm excited to help present the, that to you uh, in the coming uh, hour. Great. Thanks, Dave. So we're having quite a few comments about how um, it's hard to hear you. So um, I'll send you a chat message real quick okay. uh, while, while Jeff does his introduction. So Jeff, can you introduce yourself, please? Sure, and uh, hopefully people can hear me. I'm a little bit louder than Dave just in general, but um, very, very excited to be here and talk about Civi CRM. Uh, it's, uh, it's a platform we've been using in our organization uh, for about four years now. And um, I got involved in the nonprofit space uh, because my daughter was born with a genetic disorder. And uh, coming from a technology background, uh, we got involved, uh, my wife and I, in, in uh, establishing a couple of different nonprofits as well as uh, getting uh, established with the Foundation for Broader Early Research. And what we've, uh, what we've done is focused a lot on how we can use technology to you know, not just advance the organization from an operations standpoint, but also help advance it from a fundraising and donor management standpoint. So uh, when I'm not working in the nonprofit space, uh, I spend quite a bit of time uh, still in the technology sector, but mostly focused on local search and discovery uh, technology and, and uh, mobile application development. Great. Welcome, Jeff. And I'd also like to thank uh, Elliot Harmon from TechSoup and Donald Bogle from City CRM. They are uh, answering chat questions, so submit your questions. Some will answer it, or it will be held to the very end. We have 15 minutes reserved for Q&A. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'll go through uh, the agenda. We're going to talk about what is Civi, the features that it has, and give you some examples of how it's being used. And we'll talk deeper about how the Foundation for Prader Willey Research is using Civi Serum. We'll talk about how you can get started. We'll have some time for Q&A, and then just a quick wrap-up. But before we get started, I want to do a quick poll to find out how you are currently tracking your information. So choose as many of these that apply to you. So just click on those boxes. How are you currently, how are you or your organization currently tracking your data? 
So I'll give you a few seconds. And Dave, why don't we do a quick sound check? You said you, you're not using your headset? Yeah, I just took the headset off, just using the handset. Is that better? It's a little bit better, but I think you're going to have to project a little bit more. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> Hopefully you don't lose your voice over this. Okay, so we've got – I'll uh, show the – I'll skip to results, and I'll – you should still be able to submit. So most everyone is using spreadsheets in some fashion. I imagine you're using multiple forms. A lot of QuickBook users out there. Oh, the paper users. We'll talk about that. And not tracking your data at all. Okay, so we're going to close this poll. There you go. You can see Brings the, uh, back some of these answers bring back some familiar memories. <laughs> Hopefully you've learned some lessons that you can share. Sure. Okay, so let's get started with Civi CRM offers many features. Dave, can you explain the different tools available and give some examples of how it's being used by nonprofits? Yeah, sure can, Cammy. Good question. <laughs> Um, so uh, CiviCRM, the CRM part stands for Constituent Relationship Management, and uh, it's uh, related to the idea of contact relationship management, which was uh, started as Salesforce automation tools quite a while back. And uh, at the beginning of the project, uh, several of us realized that there was a need to um, to come up with a solution for organizations in the civic sector. Um, so nonprofits, NGOs internationally, um, and uh, subsequently other types of non-commercial organizations that would bring some of the benefits of CRM uh, to that sector. Um, and uh, we had seen a lot of folks uh, using um, spreadsheets and paper-based solutions for keeping track of, of constituents, and also saw that there was an increasing trend uh, for organizations to be distributed, to have uh, virtual staff, not necessarily to have uh, everybody in one place where they could get to a file cabinet or a single desktop computer. Um, and so the idea of having a web-based solution uh, seemed to make sense. Um, we were also concerned that um, a lot of nonprofits were putting a lot of their uh, precious revenue resources into really expensive proprietary licensing solutions. Um, and it felt to us like there would be a place for an open source tool. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with open source as a concept, uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But basically the idea is that um, anybody can have access to the source code. Um, anybody can take that source code and modify it and customize it to do things differently than what it does out of the box. Um, and that uh, people can uh, share those distributions. And so part of the concept in the nonprofit sector is that if organizations can uh, collaborate around their requirements and share resources to help develop solutions that really meet their requirements, then that's great for the sector overall. Um, we also felt like it was a good idea to uh, see about combining the types of information sharing that could happen on a website with um, the actual information about constituents. And so CiviCRM from the beginning was integrated into two different open source content management systems. And you might see the acronym CMS up here, and that's what that stands for. Um, again, I think there was a, uh, a webinar on CMSs pretty recently, and hopefully people have an idea of what they are. But basically, it's kind of the modern way to have a website that's dynamic and can be interactive and where you don't need to go to a website developer and uh, ask them every time you want to add content or change what's on your website. Um, the CiviCRM team is uh, located in uh, three different countries, U.S., Poland, and India, and the platform is localized. It's been translated into more than 20 languages, and we have folks, uh, volunteer folks working on those translations uh, all over the uh, all over the world really, um, which is uh, really exciting. Um, and it means that if you have the need to maintain your constituent information um, in more than one language, uh, that's definitely one benefit that Civi has. Sorry. 
Ty moved it forward for you. Great. Um, so one of the big benefits that CiviCRM brings to nonprofits is the idea that uh, you can have all your data in one place. Um, when Before I was working on this project, uh, I worked a, at another organization that was offering uh, online fundraising solutions for folks, and it was a pretty cool tool, and, and a lot of people liked it and used it, um, but then when they wanted to do mailings, for instance, online mailings for any newsletter, they had another place where they had that data. Um, and if they had, were running events, then maybe they had another place where they had information about people who had registered for events. Um, and another spreadsheet where they might be keeping information about grants or uh, cases working with clients. And one of the things that CIVI does that I think is really exciting um, for the sector and really a great benefit is that it keeps all that data in one place, um, knowing that um, whether somebody's a volunteer, a member, a client, uh, a staff person, somebody who comes to an event, first of all, these people often wear lots of different hats. And uh, you know, donors go to events, and so do volunteers. And being able to see all that and um, understand when you're looking at a particular constituent all the different ways that they've interacted with the organization um, is a really great benefit and something that CiviCRM um, offers. To illustrate that a little bit more clearly, um, this is uh, from one of our training sites, an example of a home dashboard that you can have in CiviCRM. And uh, if you kind of look at it a little bit more closely, you can see that um, you have the ability to have information about um, donations that have been happening on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, if your organization does case management, you can have information about open cases for you as the person who's looking at this dashboard. Um, and these are just two examples, but um, this dashboard can also include information about events that you're running, um, how your membership campaign is going, um, basically all the different ways that your constituents are interacting. And the dashboard is customizable so that um, the person who is uh, the development director might want a dashboard that's really focused on donations, while somebody who's working on uh, running events might want to really be focused on how's registration coming for our um, uh, golf event, for instance. Um, so you really have the opportunity to have the big picture at the organization level by bringing together all these different kinds of data. Um, when you're beginning to look at a particular um, constituent, um, the model is very much constituent-centric or contract-centric. So when you're looking at a constituent, you can potentially have information about how they participated in events, when they've given contributions, or whether they have, do they have outstanding pledges, have they received newsletters from you, e-newsletters, um, and what other kinds of meetings, phone calls, and other interactions you might have had with them, volunteering episodes, et cetera. Um, in order to see how that might look on a real city screen, um, here's an example of uh, a CIVI screen for a particular constituent, a Ms. Jane Black, and uh, we can see that uh, you know, we have her name up there. And uh, this area, we have a whole bunch of different tabs um, with little numbers by them. And those numbers are basically indicating to us um, a level of engagement, different kinds of engagement that um, that constituent has had with my organization. Um, you also get a nice snapshot from a summary point of view of um, information about them, um, who their employer is, Conservation Corps, what their position is, the ability to store uh, work address, home address, actually as many addresses as you want, um, privacy information, uh, phone number, email, all that kind of information, all here sort of in one nice snapshot uh, for you to look at um, for the client. Another uh, benefit that CiviCRM brings to the table um, as a solution that's integrated with your website, with your CMS, is the ability to self-service collect information from your constituents. Um, this is an example of a um, user registration page for the International Mi Mountain Biking Association. And you can see that um, we're collecting account information here at the top. 
um, such as username and email address, but uh, down below there is another part of the form that um, is completely configurable that CiviCRM provides that allows you to collect whatever other information you might need uh, about this particular constituent who is becoming a user on your website, who is getting ready to interact with your website, potentially blog, post content, etc. cetera. Um, so the fact that you can do this and that the constituent can come back at a later point and keep their information up to date, you can prompt them uh, to stay up to date, um, and they can take care of that information and make sure that the information that you have for them is accurate. Um, is uh, another benefit that Civi brings to you based on being web-based and integrated with your CMS. One of the nice things about a web-based tool is that it allows us to integrate with other web services. And uh, a nice example of that is the map integration that CiviCRM comes with out of the box where you can basically sign up for a free Google or Yahoo map account and um, once you have that, any of the constituents that you have in the database um, are geocoded and uh, can be displayed on a map. Um, and this is an example where I've actually uh, done a quick search for people who are you know, on a particular committee, and it's returned basically the physical locations of the three people that are in San Francisco on that committee. And one of the things that allows me to do is figure out where we should have a committee meeting because I can see where each of them are and what location might be uh, convenient for them. Um, but there's a lot of other interesting things that you can do once you're able to show maps, both for constituents as well as things like event locations. So now let's uh, start looking at some of the, uh, quickly at some of the components that are part of Civi in a little bit more detail. Um, we have a component called Civi Contribute, which is uh, focused around fundraising and provides support for recording online and offline donations. Includes uh, a wide variety of built-in reports and a configurable dashboard. Um, you can use what we call smart groups, which is basically a safe search type function um, to be able to pull out lists of people based on um, giving criteria. Um, between giving ranges, giving dates, um, all kinds of different criteria, demographic criteria, et cetera, and then use those smart groups potentially to drive your communications, whether email, snail mail, um, et cetera. Um, there's also a personal campaign page feature, which basically allows your constituents to become fundraisers on your behalf and set up, a, um, set up their own giving portals. And Jeff's actually going to talk about that in quite a bit of detail because uh, his group uses that feature a lot. Um, one of the things that um, Civi offers, we mentioned, is this online donation uh, capability. And uh, this is an example of a uh, site um, for a Concern Worldwide, which is an organization based in Ireland but global, which does fundraising for um, international crisis situations. Um, they used Civi CRM uh, last year uh, to raise more than $2 million for uh, the Haiti earthquake and continue to use Civi for a number of different appeals. Um, you can see that on this page um, they basically have um, an invitation to donate or to drill down more deeply and learn about a particular appeal and donate at that level. Because CiviCRM allows you to offer as many different contribution pages as you want um, with a point and click interface to create them, um, you can have lots of different campaigns and separate con contribution pages for them that really are focused on different tasks, different things that your organization is doing. A couple of other features um, in the online campaign, uh, online contribution page uh, functionality. Um, this is a page from uh, the Mozilla Foundation. They have a drumbeat uh, campaign to raise money for the foundation and for Firefox development. And you notice that one of the things that they're featuring up front is the ability to get a really cool T-shirt. Um, which is an example of a thank you gift. And CiviCRM allows you to configure thank you gifts as part of your contrib online contribution or offline contribution functionality and set things like um, contribution levels. Um, see there's a question about recurring donations, which I will speak to because you can actually see on this, this particular example that um, 
the, the contributors invited to either make an, a one-time or a recurring contribution. Um, that functionality is available a bit conditionally depending upon what payment processor you use. And CiviSRAM offers quite a few different plug-in payment processors depending upon what's going to make sense for your organization, your contribution volume, um, where you're located, um, and quite a few other factors. I mentioned the idea of uh, personal campaign pages, um, and here's an example of one for uh, Creative Commons, which is uh, another CiviSRAM user organization. And this is uh, one of the board members and founders of Creative Commons, Laura Slessing, who is prompting folks out in his community to uh, help contribute and support the Creative Commons cause. And as you can see, uh, these personal campaign pages um, are kind of cool because they allow each of your fundraising constituents to set a goal. Um, there's not one in here, but you can also have like an honor list that scrolls um, with the names of folks who have given. Um, and uh, in the back, in the back office, um, people who give through a portal like this, um, the person whose portal it is winds up getting what we call a soft credit, which is a concept that should be familiar to those of you who are in the development side, so that you can see who your really uh, active and successful fundraisers are. Second key feature or set of functionality in Civi is the events functionality. And uh, you have the ability to create as many events as you want and have both the event listings, uh, event information pages, and online registration integrated with your Drupal or Joomla website. Um, participants who come to events or register events become part of your CRM and just another piece of information that you have about the constituent. Um, it's very easy to figure out either who's coming or who has come to a PRAS event and communicate with them uh, via email again or snail mail or export that information um, to share with other applications or other people. Um, you have the ability to set up a simple fee structure for events or a very complex sort of shopping cart-like fee structure where people can say, you know, I want to go to this session and not this session, and I want to have lunch, and I want to have the uh, CD afterwards or whatever. Um, so it's a pretty, uh, pretty robust set of uh, event functionality. Um, here's a simple example of an event sign-up page from uh, the Gay Straight Alliance Network, which is another CiviSRAM user, and they are um, registering people for a leadership summit. Um, and uh, very simple, this is a free event, so there's no price, pricing involved. Basically, we're collecting an email address and then some additional information, um, all of which is configured in CiviSRAM as you're creating the event, and again, allows you to collect a very rich amount of information from your event participants, which becomes part of your database. Another type of functionality in CiviCRM is the ability to offer memberships that have a defined set of benefits and a duration. They may be free. They're generally paid. Um, we can support online or offline sign-up and renewal of these memberships. So the, again, the self-service functionality is something that um, is really powerful and can help uh, save staff time and resources. Um, you can also use memberships to limit access to various pieces of content on your website. So there may be special parts of your website that you only want members to see. Um, here's an example of a um, membership sign up, self service membership sign up form for the uh, Aviation Management Association. There are quite a few trade associations uh, using CiviCRM because of this membership functionality. You see that um, you can offer lots of different membership levels that may have different pricing, different durations, based on the type of person or organization that's uh, joining. Um, so again, um, a, a really cool feature. Members become part of your database just like event participants, just like donors. And of course, somebody may be all of the above. Um, Civi has a um, built-in broadcast email functionality called Civi Mail, which allows you to do bulk mail um, and e-newsletter type communications directly from your CRM, um, which of course means that you can use all the information that you've been collecting and that we've been talking about 
to um, filter and focus your communications on particular segments of your constituents um, based on people who have come to events, money that they've given, who's a member, et cetera. Um, the email tool includes click-through tracking so you can see who's responding to various links and prompts that you have in your email campaigns um, as well as bounce handling. And there's, a, again, self-service via the website. Recipients can manage their own uh, subscriptions to mailing lists. Of course, opt out directly from a mailing if they don't, don't want to receive it anymore. Um, so one of the last things I want to mention in terms of functionality is uh, the fact of the customizability. Um, and so we have a really wide variety of folks using Civi CRM, um, many of which use it pretty much as it is out of the box. Um, but sometimes there's a need to um, develop very custom workflows, um, custom aspects of a particular feature set. And um, that's one of the cool things about it being an open source project. The code is there. Um, and if you can, if you have in-house development resources or can engage them, um, you know, there's a supportive developer community that can help them figure out the best ways to customize the application and to make it do special things that you need it to do. Um, and this is an example of the Marion Fam Maryland Family Network had some very specific needs about um, setting up training requirements by uh, staff, physician, and center and a very complex registration process um, for their family support centers. And uh, their consultant was able to uh, use CIVI and extend CIVI very easily uh, to make it support their needs. Um, one of the features that they used, which um, is a really powerful part of CIVI CRM, is the ability to create custom fields uh, for pretty much all the kinds of records that you have in your database. Um, so these are, this is an example of some custom fields that um, were created for the Maryland Family Network to be able to control various aspects of their training registration flow. And I just demonstrated here as an example of the kind of things that you can do um, in CiviCRM pretty much out of the box. And setting up custom fields is not actually a developer task. Um, it's a point-and-click administrative uh, task, so there's uh, a lot that you can do without having an, an actual engineer involved. So that pretty much is, that's kind of your 3,000-foot view of the top-level features and functionality in the system. There's also a case management component, um, which uh, we can answer a few questions on later if that's important to folks here, and a very simple grants management um, functionality as well. Um, but we've kind of covered the top level here. Um, so before I wrap up this part, I just wanted to mention a little bit about the community. Um, so CIVI has been uh, designed from the beginning to try to meet the needs of a pretty wide variety of uh, organizations in the nonprofit sector. And you can see some examples here um, in the sectors within nonprofits range from foundations like the Wikimedia Foundation to um, small community arts organizations like the Wellington Circus Trust, um, human rights organizations like Frontline Defenders, um, political parties, uh, New Zealand and Australia and Canada Green Party are some examples of that. We've uh, seen trade association examples. Um, and more recently, um, government entities such as the New York Senate and the European Union have been uh, using Civi CRM. The Senate is using it to keep track of interactions with their constituents. Um, there's also a lot of schools and religious organizations, synagogues, churches, um, church-based organizations using Civi CRM. So it's a really diverse community. And the fact that within the Civi interface, it's very easy to turn on and off various components. Um, so I showed you a lot of stuff, but you can decide that oh, we don't use membership. So Basically, you click one, uh, one, one particular checkbox, and the membership stuff disappears. Um, Civi also has been uh, growing quite rapidly. Um, we've got, as you can see, almost 400,000 downloads since 2006, and that number is probably already obsolete. Um, we believe we've got more than 3,500 active installations, again, around the world, and a really active forum, which is a great place to interact with other people in the community, 
ask questions, answer questions, um, and uh, figure out whether it's also a good place to come and figure out whether CiviCRM might be good for your organization by asking very specific questions. And we'll provide links to uh, this and other resources at the end of the session. So with that, I think I'm going to turn the, turn the mic back to Cami, and uh, we'll take on the next part of our agenda. Great. Thanks, Dave. So many uh, great questions coming through the chat. Um, I hope, hopefully you are getting them answered by Donald, but we're holding them for the Q&A. And perhaps Jeff will answer some questions during this portion. So, so Jeff, um, we're using your organization, the Foundation for Prado, Prado Lily Research, as a case study to show folks how it's being used in the field. So can you tell us how you're using it, CiviCRM, and some of the benefits as well as some of the challenges? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll talk about – I'll give you a brief introduction to who we are and kind of how we raise money. And then we'll get into why we picked it and what we use it for, um, you know, kind of what our fundraising philosophy is, how it's evolved, and then just some advice on how to make it work. So uh, real briefly here, uh, FPWR founded in 2003. Uh, it's a rare genetic disorder. There's uh, you know, millions of them out there. Um, this one happened to inflict my daughter. She's the one in the top uh, there with the blonde hair. And, uh, you know, it's an organization where, you know, we're trying to help families and, and individuals impacted by the disorder. And the way we do that is we go out and we raise money. And then we manage a, a research process where we give out grants to individual researchers who are doing medical research that can help, you know, find treatments and, and hopefully ultimately some sort of cure for it. So. We funded over $1.3 million in projects since we were founded in 2003. And here's kind of just a, a general history of the organization that I've mapped to some of the technology milestones that we've run into. I joined in uh, late 2005. And uh, starting in kind of 2006 timeframe, um, you know, we started to really try to ramp up our fundraising efforts and use more technology. So. Uh, before I joined, there was about 10 to 20 donors. Um, these were folks that were large contributors. There was no you know, real website. There was a very basic brochureware type of website. There was no online marketing being done. There was no donor management system. Came in in late 2005, and um, at that point in time, we were evaluating different types of web technologies, trying to figure out what we were going to do. And uh, we installed a very, very preliminary version of a package called Civic Space, which was a combination of a Drupal uh, CMS system coupled with Civi CRM. And uh, we didn't really do much with it at the time. You know, we kind of installed it, and we were trying to figure out where we wanted to go with it. And we kept the old website up, and decided though that we needed to really expand our fundraising effort beyond, you know, just uh, a couple of large uh, donors in, in one or two events that were happening within the U.S. So 2006, things kind of got kicked off, and there we, uh, we implemented Civi CRM 1.3. Uh, there was a module that came with it called Civi Contribute, which was the online contribution module. And that's, that's specifically what we needed when we started. That allowed us to, through PayPal Website Payments Pro, take a payment and uh, you know, be able to go out there and, and have people come back to our website and make an online donation. So we kicked off some new fundraisers. We had some folks who were parents of uh, children with prader willi syndrome who decided that they wanted to um, uh, you know, fundraise for us. And so they ran some fundraisers, and we, we drove those donations back to our website. And then we started to kind of think about the whole process of donor management and where we wanted to go with it. So from 2007 to 2010, things have kind of evolved a little bit. We've continued to implement new versions of Civi CRM. Uh, new features have come out during that time frame, stuff like Civi Event, which allowed us to do event registrations, uh, the personal campaign page system. Um, you know, we were involved kind of early on in helping to try to figure out you know, how that should work. Uh, we were also trying to also evolve our fundraising process. You know, we're an organization that's very virtual. Uh, we have a very small office in Washington, D.C., but Beyond that, uh, most of our folks are you know, kind of all over the country. Our board is all over the country. We've got now na international affiliates in Canada and elsewhere. And, and so this is an organization that's doing most of its marketing and most of its fundraising online. So how can we leverage uh, technology, and how can we also leverage you know, some of the new technological trends and, and, and online trends you know, to kind of evolve our fundraising process? So that's what this next slide is showing you. So we started out with this whole idea of, and there's some 
uh, things missing here, but catching the big fish, right? We're going to have one or two major events. Um, we're going to focus on large contributions. Uh, we did some golf tournaments, some galas. We still do some of those, but you know, they're very resource intensive. Um, they take a lot of time and effort to put on. You know, they raise a decent amount of money, but how do we go beyond that? So we started you know, kind of in the 2006-2007 timeframe, expanding into what we would call you know, more online events, um, you know, hosting walks and smaller types of uh, fundraisers across the country. And uh, it's getting more of the families involved. Hey, we don't need you to host a golf tournament or run a gala, but you know, can you have a, um, you know, a, a small event in your neighborhood or whatnot? So you know, we might have been raising something you know, in the order of $100,000 to $200,000 in the, in the first model. In the second model, we're talking more maybe thirty dollars or $40,000. But there was more of them. And now where we've evolved is we want to go mass market. So we want to build out these online fundraising pages. I want anybody to be able to log into our website using our software and be able to set up a fundraising page, go out there, share it with their friends across social networks, and try to raise money. And you know, each fundraiser in this model might be only raising one or $2,000, but our goal is to get hundreds of these people onto our system. Let's see here. So when we started out, you know, why did we pick Civi CRM? Well, in the beginning we were pretty small. We didn't have a gigantic budget, and we wanted to be able to have something that we felt could kind of adapt and grow with us. And uh, you know, when you talk about costs, it's it's interesting. You know, we went out there and did the uh, a due diligence on you know a lot of the commercial applications out there, and a lot of these folks wanted you know ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars setup fees. Um, a lot of these uh, different systems were looking to take you know you know four or five or six percent of your gross uh, income. You know, in terms of uh, you know, kind of an online or, or, you know, kind of an annual maintenance fee. And, and they were really looking for organizations that were raising at least a million dollars a year. So, you know, I'm looking at it thinking, okay, if I'm raising a million dollars a year, I don't really want to pay thirty or 40000 a year to, uh, you know, some, some sort of online system. I could probably pay a software developer way less than that to maintain what we have. So that's kind of where we started. The other reason we chose and, and have stuck with Civi CRM over the years is they continue to enhance the product. And the other thing is, is that the uh, I would say we've gotten better support out of this platform than we've gotten out of a number of other commercial uh, software applications, you know, that we've used. And you know, I've spent a lot of time in the tech industry, and I have to say, even on the commercial side, you know, in my non nonprofit uh, experience, uh, the support has just been spectacular. So I've uh, I've had a very good experience with being able to go into the online forums post a question, and within hours get a response that's a very helpful response. And uh, know that uh, I can look at the roadmap, know what kind of features are coming out, um, you know, that particular types of defects or things that are affecting us, we can either you know, A, you know, go and customize and fix right away, or we can wait for an upcoming release and know that they're going to get fixed. The other thing is, is you know, we are looking for something that does the job, but you know, doesn't overwhelm us with features and functionality. So we're looking for something that we would say is meeting our basic needs and allowing us to kind of expand from there. And like I mentioned earlier, in terms of customizations and, and cost, I would rather spend money on uh, customizing and adapting the software than I would on paying an annual license fee and then hoping that um, you know, the, the vendor's roadmap and, and, and our roadmap align. So what do we use? Uh, we've used a bunch of different stuff, but this is the st stuff here that we've stuck with. Uh, we use Civi Contribute, and then attached to that is something called a personal campaign page. So we're able to take a donation online. And then the beauty of the personal campaign pages is, is that we can have individual fundraisers have their own page out there, and that kind of connects into our system. So we're collecting that money as well. We used to use a tool called City Member to manage membership, but we've eliminated membership from our organization, so we don't charge for membership fees anymore. Uh, but when we were using it, it was great. It was it would allow you to um, you know set up a, you know a, a different types of memberships. You can have lifetimes and annuals and whatnot. You can set dues that'll remind people that they need to renew. You can uh, establish permissions and access to various parts of your site based on their membership status. So it's a useful um, module for those that that process and, and manage membership. We do use Civi Event. We used to use it more before the personal campaign page system came out. 
Um, but we still use it to register people for any sort of conference that we have uh, or any other type of paid event that we're going to have. And then on the donor database side, I mean this is kind of the heart of why you, um, why you use these tools is that you want to be able to track and record donations. Uh, we manage all of our contacts in here. We do not use our accounting system to manage donors. I know a lot of answers came out about um, using QuickBooks. I know a lot of nonprofits that do that. Um, all of our information that comes out of CIVI is summarized before it goes into QuickBooks. So we don't store individual contact records in our QuickBooks system um, for donation. We go in and we will say online donations total this amount, and that's the, um, that's the number that's recorded in our QuickBooks system. And then we handle all the individual contact records um, in our donor database instead. So Jeff, I'm going to um, interrupt because we're running short on time. Okay. So um, I wanted to jump ahead to talk about getting started using Civi. Did you have any last points that you wanted to make um, before we jump to that? Um, yeah, I'll finish the slide. Okay, great. Um, and then we use the Civi mail system to do mass mailings. And we've actually outsourced that to a, uh, an external service which I recommend you guys take a look at called Civi SMTP. Thank you so much. Sorry sure. for interrupting. No. So we're going to jump to just one slide ahead um, and talk about, because there's so many questions, how do I get started? What are the costs? Um, you know, so th this is what people are, are asking about. So, so Dave, um, can you explain the process for getting started with CVCRM and what do you need to think about beforehand and who should you have involved? Sure. Um, and I'm going to hope Jeff jumps in here a little bit as well since he's, he's the one who's had the uh, experiences of actually doing this as opposed to me on the uh, platform side. Um, but in terms of what you need physically, uh, you need to have a web server or identify a web server that you can use with a hosting provider. Um, you will need to have either Drupal or Joomla CMS um, running on that web server before you can install Civi CRM. Um, and then uh, we've got this item here called Prepare Your Data, and that's probably the biggest. And um, no matter what kind of database you're moving into, um, you need to think a lot about data migration and figure out what data you have, where is it, which, what parts of it do you need, um, and do data cleaning to hopefully get rid of a lot of garbage before you actually move it into a new system uh, like Civi CRM. Um, you do need either um, a volunteer with technical skills, somebody in-house, an IT person, or hiring a consultant to do the installation. I wouldn't recommend um, somebody who is not technical at all to take that on. Um, that said, we have a lot of small organizations with, uh, where volunteers have done this for them. Um, obviously, a consultant can do that for you as well. Um, in terms of the team, um, you're going to want to be thinking about what you're going to use Civi for, um, whether it's membership development, events, um, case management, and make sure that there are folks on your team who have domain expertise in those areas. Um, somebody asked on the chat whether uh, you can actually start with one sort of one piece of this functionality and then grow and extend uh, it to, to be used for other parts of your organization. And we actually really recommend that. Um, you know, figuring out maybe where the where the biggest need is and where you have folks who are really ready uh, to work on some change management with you and uh, bring them into the process and see about getting Civi up and used for one particular area. Maybe it's events, maybe it's uh, the online fundraising piece, um, and then, then begin to explore how you can use it and expand it in the organization for other kinds of functionality. Jeff, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no. I mean, I, there's, there was a lot of questions floating around about you know, what, what is the nature of this setup. This is, a, uh, this is a module or an extension to Drupal or Joomla. They all, they, both CMSs call it something different. But you start by having that set up and hosted somewhere, and then you add this component to it. Are there folks that will do that for you? There are, right? And um, there's even hosting companies um, that will probably do the installation for you as well. Um, and when I say installation, they'll, they'll likely set up Drupal for you and they'll likely install the Civi CRM module. Um, but in terms of configuring it to your needs and, and, and importing your data, um, that one I, I, I doubt they'll do. Um, they might do that as some sort of custom work. But there are other consultants out there, um, if you don't have technical resources on staff, um, who can help you with that, 
as well. And that's a lot of that work is is non-programming related. You don't need to to have a programming background to uh, import your data and be able to customize Civi CRM from from the admin GUI. Um, but you have to be fairly technical in the sense that you need to be able to feel comfortable, you know, being able to manipulate a spreadsheet and then import that spreadsheet, map data fields, and and whatnot. So the question comes up, what does CiviCRM cost? And uh, of course, uh, it's, the software is free. There's no licensing costs. So that's the beginning of it. But um, you know, nothing is really free in this world, and certainly not in the software world. Um, so the answer to that question is difficult. Uh, when we were discussing this earlier, Jeff compared it to asking, what does a car cost? Um, which I think is a good analog uh, because it really it really depends a lot on what you want to do with it, um, how much help you can get from in-house resources and volunteers versus paying a consultant, um, how much data you have, how complex is that data, how complex is your organization in terms of the various folks that are going to be using the CRM and what they need to be doing with it. Um, so really that's a really tough question to ask, to answer. Um, and what we'd say is that you definitely need administrative resources to maintain the data, and in some way you need some technical admin resources to uh, manage things like deduplication, data import and export, um, and setting up custom data. Many of these are one-time tasks, however, and in terms of the people who use the system on a day-to-day -day basis, um, certainly a little bit of training. There are um, there's one really great book out there and another one coming soon for people who are, like to learn that way. Um, we have um, various tutorials, online tutorials on civicrum.org that also can be used, as well as live training sessions for folks um, who learn best that way. But training is a, definitely an important part of this. If you don't have um, folks in-house uh, with some technical abilities to help you think about the data structure, um, customizations that you might need, how to move your data, where to host, um, then that's where you're going to be looking for an IT partner. Um, org has a really good list of professional service providers. Um, we don't have any interest in any of them, um, but they're up there for you to look at and talk to and obviously get references from. Um, but selecting a partner is important. And I guess the main thing I would advise people not to do is to assume that the person that built their website or designed their logo is the same person who would be good to help them um, installing a CRM and configuring a CRM because those are very different skill sets. Um, hopefully you can find somebody uh, who has experience with open source and experience with CiviCRM and they can show you and tell you about other organizations that they've helped. Um, and hopefully those are organizations that have some similar use cases and structure to yours. And um, you'll want to ask them, if you think that you might need some customization, you'll want to talk to them about how they go about customizing the platform. Uh, because there are definitely best practices for doing that um, where you're not creating upgrade problems for you in the future. And that should be something that they have a very clear answer to if you ask them that question. Um, next steps for those of you who are just sort of Getting engaged, uh, there is a really awesome uh, free book online called Understanding Civi CRM that kind of takes you from the top level in terms of what the pieces are and what do they do and who's using them down into a lot of details about configuration and everyday tasks. Um, we have a public demo um, which you are free to play with and try stuff out, and that's another good way to get sort of get your hands in. Um, talking to other people on the forums, at local meetups, um, find out how they're using it, what's working for them, what's not, um, potentially a consultant, um, as well as installing a test system of your own and bringing in some of your data and seeing how that works for you. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Cami for, I think, Q&A. Exactly. There's been a ton of questions, and I'm so thankful to have uh, Donald answering questions rapidly and, and Elliot for pulling them so I can um, sort through them. So you did a great job of giving us an overview of what you need to get it set up. So most likely people will need to have somebody um, set it up for them who has that expertise, and that means hiring a consultant. Um, 
what in general do they charge for the service? Can you give us a ballpark? Jeff, do you have uh, um, I, from your experience with what, what you I have? set it up for my own organization. Um, you know, I don't I don't really know the answer to that. We moved um one organization that we're affiliated with to a company called Springs Hosting in Colorado Springs, and they set it up for us for free in exchange for a contract. Um, so if it's a, and when I say set it up, I mean they, they obviously it was a shared system, so they had to install all the modules themselves and and get everything kind of ready and configured for us to go in and customize it on the on the website. But um, I, I really I, I don't have a number for you. Um, I think I think some of these hosting companies um, have either automated it or would um, would probably give you um, the ability to do it yourself or might even do it for you um, as long as it's straightforward enough. So it's good for people to make a couple phone calls and get some quotes. I would think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, the the one thing that I have heard is I've heard um, quotes on the data migration piece ranging from. 2000 and up, depending upon the size and complexity yeah. of the data. And that's probably one of the biggest parts of the task is having someone look at your, the data that you have in one or many, many places, uh, figuring out what you need in terms of custom fields, um, and then actually getting that data cleaned up and moved. And uh, there are folks out there and on our professional services list who actually specialize in that. And, and it, it, uh, it can be uh, Definitely something, something in your budget. I, I would say, you know, if you're not, if you don't have research to do that in house, I would be looking at at least two to three thousand dollars, if not more, for that. And it depends on the state of your data. I mean, we skipped this slide in the presentation, but getting your data in a very good and organized and accurate state before you dump it into Civi CRM is a is a smart idea. You know, it really doesn't matter what system you would use. Um, you know, dumping you know inaccurate or, or disorganized data in there isn't going to help you. So, you know, number one, getting getting your your information organized and set. I would do as much of that as you can yourself because that's just spreadsheet work uh, before you hired a resource to import it. And I was trying to pull up that slide that you were referring to. Plus, everyone, you'll get this PowerPoint um, later today. So, another question that came came up about a dedicated employee, and I know we skipped over you know, the best practices for maintaining your data, but w this goes for any database. Do you, do you need to have a dedicated employer? What would you recommend for um, keeping, keeping your data organized and um, current? I think you need a, an organized process. And depending on how, or, how big and complicated your company is, uh, or how many donors or, or records you have in your database, that might dictate whether it's a full-time job or not. Our problem was even when we had 50 people, right? And I say 50, not 50 employees, 50 donors, right? When I when I came around, it, the processes were bad enough, you know, where it, it it wasn't it wasn't working for us. So first and foremost, whether it's a part-time job or not, you need to have a very organized process. And what I mean by that is is, you know, how do you maintain this information? Where does it so, where does it source from? If somebody's going to fundraise from you and and they're going to send you a bunch of checks in the mail, do you have the right information to be able to record that donor into your database? How often are you um, you know refreshing that information? You need to understand how, what Civi does to your data, right? So when somebody logs in and creates another donation, you know how that record gets updated. You need to make sure you understand how that works. So it's just understanding all those pieces and making them work out. And then you know for our organization. Um, yeah, Foundation for Product Early Research, we have 5,000 solid donor records. And um, we do not need a full-time staff person to maintain those. But you know, every so often, you know, we will bring in additional resources and we will go through a process where we will have to contact and try to clean up and, and just update and refresh that data. So let's get to a question regarding security and a concern about hosting data online. So can you talk a little about about the risks, or if there are risks associated with hosting your data online? Um, I would say that there are risks. Um, there are risks, security risks for data no matter where you have it. Um, whether you have it on a single desktop um, in a spreadsheet or an access database, um, or whether you have it online, again, it's really a matter of processes. Um, you know, if, if you've got it uh, on a desktop, you have the risk of the, the data not being backed up. Uh, you have the risk of 
um, somebody um, having access to that computer and uh, exporting the data and doing things with it that you don't want them to do. Um, you have the risk of uh, the person whose computer it is uh, getting hit by a bus, and nobody knows how to log into the computer. So, you know, I, I think the risks that you have online and offline they're somewhat different, but it really has to do with making sure that you have processes in terms of uh, either you or your hosting provider is doing the right kind of backups, is maintaining the latest versions of um, the operating system, the web server, um, the database manager, um, and both CityCRM and your content manager. So those are best practices that um, help guarantee that you have a secure setup. Right. Um, but I, and I do think that uh, the risks are in some ways quite comparable, um, but just a bit different, and it's a matter of making sure that you follow good procedures. No, and Dave, I think you're right, because I think um, whether it's online or offline isn't really it. It's, it's, it's whether you're storing it in some sort of distributed fashion or you're storing it in kind of one in some sort of file, um, we have one organization who had that concern: it, the moving data in the CRM, which would be in a you know kind of a, a hosted database format, was going to be less secure than keeping it in Microsoft Access. But this is the same organization that stuck their Access database up in one location and then gave everybody file share access to it because they needed multiple users to to, to access it. And to me, that's that's more uh, or less secure and a little bit more stressful than uh, than the other model. So it's just it's important to know that um, you know regardless of how you're storing your information, uh, there's pros and cons to doing that. You just need to make sure that you're doing it the right way. Well, this has been a great presentation, and obviously we could continue for another half hour at least an hour. But I posted this uh, resource slide for you guys to to see that there's some um, links to explore once you get this presentation. Um, the book that, uh, that Dave had mentioned is uh, right here. So also I want to let you know that next, uh, let's see, if your questions haven't been answered, please post those to our community forums. I'm going to send out a link to everyone right now where you can post those questions. If you're, uh, the next webinar we're offering is December 9th on winning grants. I'll be um, sending, us, uh, sending you a link to that as well in the post-event message. And we'd like to thank ReadyTalk for sponsoring this webinar series. And for everyone, thank you so much for attending today's webinar. It's been a ton of great information. I hope your questions were answered. Again, post additional questions to the forums if you didn't get them answered. And watch for an email from me this afternoon with more information. So Dave and Jeff, thank you so much. This has been really helpful and really interesting. Obviously stimulated a lot of questions. So um, thanks again. Oh, for, you're, you're welcome. Great. Yes, thank you're you. You're welcome. And, and thanks, everybody, for your participation and all the great questions. Wonderful. So thanks, all. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.